Our next caller is Nicole from California. Nicole, welcome back. How's it been? What's going on? (laughs) I'm glad to be back. Yeah. So so what's happening? How can we help you? Oh, not much. I was just coming on to give you guys a follow-up. So it's probably been close to 10 weeks since I was on last um, in regards to my whole story with the spinal meningitis and having the one leg shorter than the other and everything. So I followed you guys' advice on doing a lot of just uh, unilateral stuff. Um, You know, a lot of single leg work. Um, You had mentioned doing like 15 minutes a day, every day. Um, I increased uh, creatine. I was started taking like the half scoops um, daily. Um, And I can't believe how, what a difference. It just, it's awesome. I mean, my legs have grown so much. I can do things like... With my leg that I couldn't do yoga poses I can do now, um, I kick myself in the ass for not doing single leg work 10, 15 years ago. Um, so it's been great. Amazing. I mean, I can't even thank you guys enough on how awesome it's been. Nicole, I'm, I'm getting the chills right now. So I remember you, you awesome. told us, you know, your, your story about, you know, what happened as a kid and you always had this kind of deficiency on one side. And, you know, our advice was, unilateral work. And we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, how to kind of change the mentality around those things. I'm so glad you called us to give an update. In fact, uh, I thought about you a few times afterwards. I remember the story you told us. I was like, man, that's really challenging. So you're noticing a big improvement. You feel like it's big. It's made a good difference then. Yeah. You know, um, I have a couple of questions to just uh, to kind of follow up, but in regards to that, yeah, I mean, I can't believe how much my actual, my right leg, my good leg grew in, and like, I was like, oh, okay, great. I had to suck it up. I won't lie. I didn't take your advice for a little bit. I was doing like, <laughs> it was, you know, it, I had to like get out of my own way. Um, and I just seen a drastic improvement even on my good leg, which was crazy to um, see. So it's overall been great. Um, so I'm like looking at my notes. So I just have a couple follow-up questions that okay. I'd like to ask. Um So in regards to just watching my legs build, um, I kind of removed myself from the scale, but I have noticed an overall, um, and I know you guys talked about this before, an overall like thickness, like everywhere in my body that I didn't really notice before. So I'm just kind of wondering if that is kind of normal. It's nothing that I'm ashamed of, but I'm, you know, it's like, I just kind of want to know if that's normal. Yeah. So, okay. Do you feel stronger? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, and you're yeah. noticing more muscle in those target areas, the the legs, both the the target one and then the one that was okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you're gaining muscle, and you, and you feel good because you're gaining some muscle. Now, did you gain body fat? I don't know. Um, you know, maybe, probably not. I think what you did is you started to send the right signal to your body. You upped your creatine. Creatine is a very effective natural supplement for building muscle and helping with recovery. It's also got some health, some good health properties. You probably built a lot of muscle. One of the ways you can tell, by the way, if it's mostly muscle versus body fat is performance in the gym. Strength increase. Strength, yeah, strength. Where do you notice the the, the tighter feelings? Is it in the parts where there's muscle or do you feel it around your waist where we tend to store body fat, it, right? It's your waist. And, you know, I, I understand I'm a female. And, you know, I had brought it up previously that I cut my creatine big time just because I did feel bloated. But I have over, the, you know, the weeks, like, uh, been very consistent with the creatine and I've noticed a big change and I think that's a big helper. So I don't know if that's it, but yeah, it's around my waist. And I think to that point, um, I started to notice within like three weeks in that I was like starving, like yeah. literally yeah. starving. This is like, all good. Those are good and, signs. This is all know, very good signs. And, and so I've been trying to get up to like a hundred to 120 grams of protein a day. So I've really been packing my mornings with protein because I just felt like in the afternoon, I was like just eating. I, I work from home and my pantry's right behind me at my desk and it's a nightmare. <laughs> so. Yeah. so here's, so, so welcome to the other mind game now. Okay. So <laughs> there was some mind game, there was some mind game challenges we had going into this and now we're encountering some other ones. And this is a common one for, especially for women is the building muscle aspect, right. getting stronger aspect, it can start to mess with you a little bit. But if we took that out, let's just just take that part out for a second. Let's just pretend that you didn't even notice any of that. Everything else 
feels great, right? Uh, even the increase in appetite mm. probably feels good. You're stronger. Energy might be better. Is your libido feeling better? How's your sleep? Like, look at all those signs. And if those things are better, um, then I wouldn't worry about the feeling bigger part. And that, again, that can really mess with people's heads. Now, if, if your diet is comprised of a lot of heavily processed foods, you may in fact be eating way too much. But if you know you're eating whole natural foods, you're focusing on your protein, you're noticing performance you know, gains in the gym or with your workouts and your legs feel better, I wouldn't worry about that right now at all. I, I think you're going in the right direction. Well, I, I, yeah, I think you're you're killing it. We still we do have the option though. You could run a mini cut. I mean, if you if the if you felt the metabolism kick back up, you've been hitting your protein targets. We've built some good muscle. You've you've kicked ass for a, what a couple months now. Um, and you if you wanted to lean out a little bit, I don't think there's anything wrong either with running a little bit lower calorie for a couple weeks and then coming back. Um, to your maintenance or surplus too. So you know, our focus was a little bit different last time, right? We were the the biggest focus was the imbalance and really helping you there. I think that was the main conversation that we talked about. But it looks like you've had uh, tremendous success with that, and now you're noticing some things like that uh, around your waist. And there's nothing wrong with us saying, "Hey, let's let's run two weeks of a, a lower calorie diet for a while and see if that leans you out a little bit and see how you feel." Uh, and then go back to your maintenance or surplus. Uh, so long as you're in a, a healthy place calorie wise right now, do you have any idea approximately how many calories you're eating a day right now? Yeah. So I, um, I'll go between like 1800 to 2200 a day. I try to stay within that, within that range. Um, so, you know, sometimes it's on the higher end, sometimes it's on the lower end. Um, I feel good about, about that. Um, mainly I eat a lot of it in the morning, um, just cause uh, that's what I'm most hungry. And then I'll kind of eat later in the day for dinner. Um, but yeah, right around in there. Yeah. That's, that's not a bad, that's not a bad calorie, uh, you know, place to be in. I, you know, do you have our intuitive nutrition guide, Nicole? Um, I don't have that. You guys sent me the maps prime pro last time. And so I started to use that, um, which I really love. Okay. Um, my husband even you now <laughs> with okay. me. So Perfect. Well, I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide because I think it's going to help you with the, oh no, am I getting bigger? Is it body fat? Is it muscle? It's going to help you with that internal dialogue quite a bit because the, oh. the intuitive nutrition guide really does help you focus on the the signs that you want to focus on and take your, your, your I guess, your focus off the of things that can often mess with our heads a little bit. It's so we'll send that over to you. Go through it. I think it'll help you out. Okay. Um, and then just one last thing before I let you guys go, can I kick back into doing <laughs> to like some deadlifts or like, I mean, I did, I've kind of thrown them in there now and then, but I was, cause I started to get bored. So I was like, I'm going to do like, you know, some <laughs> double leg exercises. So, um, do you guys have any good, like, can I start, like, I want to kind of start doing some more, um, I'm just not sure which ones would be the best in this situation. Well, I'll, look, if, if you were my client, it, okay, because we're dealing with not just an imbalance, but an actual short, a leg that is shorter than the other. Right. I would almost always train you unilaterally. Yes. That's yes. just 100%. Yeah. I, I, oh. I don't think I would ever have you focus on okay. bilateral exercise. Now, it's okay to throw them in every once in a while. Real life involves bilateral movements, so you still want to do them here and there because obviously in real life, you know, it doesn't care if one leg is shorter than the other, so... You're still going to okay. practice those, but I would almost entirely always do unilateral work because that's what's going to benefit you the most. Maybe maybe an exercise or two a week tops that yeah. you throw in, you know, a couple sets here or there. But the program, what we talked about last time, staying focused on unilateral. I mean, you can develop and strengthen and, and oh, build. you get a great you, physique. Yeah, you yeah. can you can pretty much do everything you need to do by training that way. And in your case, it is it is what is best for your body. It doesn't mean that you can't play with it here and there. And, you know, oh, let's just see. I've been doing single leg for a while. I wonder mm -hmm. how strong my regular bilateral deadlift would be. Today, I'm going to do three sets of it at the end of my workout or sometime in my routine just to kind of check up on yourself. That's fine. But honestly, with that that imbalance like that, it, it's just not ideal for you. you you're only risking Yeah, it. that's novelty for you yeah. in this instance. So, yeah, I agree. It's, it's just going to benefit you more to kind of stay as much as you can in, in unilateral. All right. Well, not the answer I wanted to hear, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'll, I'll you, 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 you know. did, you, hold on, Nicole. You did what we said last time and what happened? Yeah. 
I know. I mean, as long as I'm seeing the strength, I'm seeing, you know, my legs getting bigger and like, you know, better. So obviously I know it works, but you know, you get kind of in your head. And, of course. You yep. Well, course. you can, you can also, I mean, uh, you don't have to stick to the same unilateral exercises though. I mean, you can start to get creative right. and, and, yeah. tr and try new things and challenge your body in different ways too, though. Yeah. Like, are you, are, like, are you, uh, are you playing with the Turkish get up at all? Um, no, I, I have before in the past when I used to do like boot camp um, classes and it's just, it was, it's really difficult for me to get up on with one, one leg from the ground like that on one side, but the other side I can do fine, but I just found it really challenging. And so I'm kind of one of those like people where I found it challenging. And so I was like, screw this exercise and threw it out uh, where well, I, I, I got some more advice for you. You don't want to listen to, or you don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should practice it's speaking. I you. think you should practice Turkish getups on the side that you, that's, that you struggle with. That's I, right. I think you should practice them every day, just five to 10 minutes. Cause I tell you, I swear to God, Nicole, if you practice the movements that you feel like you can't do with that one side and you get good at them, the, what you're going to get back from it, I can't even explain how much of a benefit you're going to get from that. It's going to change everything. Everything gets stronger. Yes. Yeah. No, I know. I've seen it happen over the last couple of months. So I, I, I trust you guys just getting in and getting excited to practice it every day. But Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for calling in. This is the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. This is two months in. You haven't seen anything yet. So stay stay on the okay. course. Thanks yeah. for the update. That's Doing great, great Nicole. Right, guys, appreciate it. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Yeah, you know, I uh I've trained have you guys ever trained anybody where they mm -hmm. had an actual anatomical Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had a I've had a couple clients. I had one client who couldn't fully extend one arm. Yeah. And then I had somebody had with a, a shorter shoulder leg. and yeah. yeah and it's just, things. you know, when you're talking about an ana anatomical thing that you can't change, like you can't make her leg longer, right? right? Yeah. Unilateral all the time. There's, there's always, always, always unilateral and you get exceptional results. Yeah, Cause that you way. have to understand that anytime she does a deadlift, you know, everything else is compensated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's got a, she's got a one inch raise on one side, which is going to run all the way up the connect chain. That's going to be symmetrical shift. Yeah. So deal with. every time. And like you said, it, it doesn't hurt to, to test it every once in a while, just because real life, she was on both feet. She'll have to pick a couch up or a kid or do yeah. something with. So it's not a bad idea to make sure you still have the capability of doing stuff with that, but you know, lot of training all the way for, and then that's why I brought up the Turkish get up too, because such a great movement that's going to highlight the it's going to highlight any left oh, to right and balance. Left to right mm -hmm. discrepancy. Yep. And just a, a, a challenge, very challenging exercise for someone to do. And that's a great way to keep her interested in trying to get better and improve. Because I do understand that, you know, you train a certain way only for a while, even if it is what's best for you, you get bored and feel like you mm -hmm. need something new or different. Well, you know, add a yeah. movement like That'll that. That'll add a great skill for her. Hell yeah. yeah but so it, it was funny as, as soon as she's like, yeah, but I couldn't really get up on one side. And yeah. right away I'm like, oh, yeah, well, that's what you got to do. <laughs> That's what you got to You want to find those moments. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.